Welcome back to a Total War Saga, Troy. So, um, my Epic and Total War Access accounts have been linked, so I will probably be playing the Amazons when that comes out, but uh, for now I've been looking around on the various factions, and uh, while I would like to play a Trojan faction, partly because I like the Trojans better than I like the Danans. I think we're going to go play as Odysseus. Um, Silver -tongued Odysseus. Now, his starting situation is hard, but I'll leave the campaign and battle difficulty on easy. Um, also, I will be doing a one per day episode, uh, because I have some other games coming up that I also want and uh, should record. But... Uh, Odysseus, uh, he starts on the uh, westernmost uh, side of uh, Greece, out here. I'm not entirely sure what this island is called, but um, his roster is focused on stealthy and fast-moving units, which can be best utilized for outflanking, outflanking and rear charges, while the main line is strong enough to hold the enemy, and uh, that's kind of fun. I haven't played the faction properly, I've just tested a turn. I did try to play as Paris, and uh, that Helen thing did not uh, sit well with me. Um, I can see why his, um, he's deemed to have a hard start, and now I go play Odysseus with a hard start instead. I also tried playing as Hector. Uh, Hector was quite fun, but uh, his unit roster is very focused on heavy infantry uh, almost solely focused on heavy infantry so while it was fun and it wasn't really um wasn't an extremely challenging campaign as expected even though his start is normal um i still think that the roster of odysseus is more appealing now Odysseus gets 12% uh, movement uh, speed uh, when he's, um, his army is moving at sea. That doesn't apply to his heroes. This is Odysseus's personal bonuses. And also his army gets plus 5 to morale when fighting at sea. His faction abilities are safe havens, which means that you can use spies to construct safe haven buildings in foreign settlements. And you can then use those um, safe havens using heroes to recruit units in regions that doesn't really belong to you. I haven't tested that, but that sounds fun. Also, the safe haven building types depend on the existing military buildings present in your own settlements. So, for those of you who have played uh, Total War Warhammer 2, this kind of reminds me of the uh, Undercities uh, that the Skaven have there. Uh, the other mechanic is Coastal Mastery. You get unique buildings that are available for construction that surpass those of other factions, which you can only build in coastal settlements. But you can only upgrade the main building in land... You can only upgrade the main building in landlocked settlements. So that's probably why his starter situation is hard, is hard then. Because any inland settlements, then you can only have tier one of a building. So you want to have all of the coastal settlements, but you you need to have um, pretty strong support from those coastal settlements to go inland. Of course, we could conquer all the entirety of this uh, stretch here, but that is very unlikely. His unique faction units are uh, Odysseus Midnight Runners. They are a weight class medium, experts in flanking. They have a special missile uh, attack like the uh, Axemen that we uh, saw when we were playing as Lycia. They do armor-piercing weapon damage, which is very nice. And uh, they have Stalk. Uh, stalk means that they can move hidden while in any terrain. Uh, they have better flanked, uh, flank attacks. Uh, they can hide in scrub and forests. Uh, they can deploy in vanguards. And they can shoot while moving, so these are nice. They, have, uh, they don't have that much armor, but that is to be expected by a medium weight class unit. Not too bad speed uh, for a medium class. 
here's uh you see 42 versus 55 this is a light class unit uh guerrilla stalkers javelin infantry quite nice damage and they also do the same thing that harpies do uh and these guys have sniping uh which is really nice they stay hidden while firing so as long as you're outside of the distance a uh, unit can see you when you have a sniper unit uh they remain hidden of course i don't know if the ai is uh completely stupid and uh just stands there wondering eh, where are the javelins coming from but uh i would think that they would go watch uh or go look for them in the direction the javelins were coming from at the very least they are also stalkers and unspottable uh unspottable is nice because i think the range that other people or other units can see them is only 30 meters or something like that unless they have um, an, uh, an ability that I don't remember the name of if that even is present in Troy uh, they have ambushers these are uh, quite good javelin infantry uh, also stalkers weight class light and they have exemplary ambushers um, which are also very good um, they can snipe as well so these the roster of odysseus is basically focused around uh, uh low ammunition but high damage armor piercing uh sniping sniper slash flanking units and most of his roster uh, consists of light and medium class uh units now that is something that i didn't explain in the previous campaign uh and it's kind of complicated but basically, weight class light means that they have low armor, high speed and maneuverability. Uh, not usually high melee defense, so this is actually quite high for a light class unit. Um, medium class would be a kind of a, a midway between that. 45 armor for a light class is very good, actually. Um, whereas heavy uh, weight class those are heavily armored maybe 70 80 90 or even 100 armor uh with then low speed because not that easy to move around in that heavy armor uh, also shields in uh in troy uh block quite a bit of missile fire this is actually a low uh shield at 40 percent uh, which is why armor piercing um uh, missile units with armor piercing they are quite good because of that because the, the heavily armed uh shielded warriors can often be at 60 70 even 80 percent uh block of uh missile fire which then more or less it makes the missile unit useless anyways all that aside let's just jump in or rather sail away We've seen this, so I'm going to skip this. Oh, silver-tongued Odysseus, there is only one response to Queen Helen's abduction, and that is war. Paris of Troy must pay! King Agamemnon of high-walled Mycenae must avenge this insult to his brother. Troy thinks to slight me, but they will pay the price. You are king of Ithaca and the master of deception. Wise and resourceful. Great heroes like Achilles himself will take heed of your counsel. Each of Helen's original suitors must decide whether to honor their oath, calling on them to defend Helen's husband. The wine dark sea lures me from my home. The Teleboans, once obedient to the kings of Ithaca, are now trying their fortune as sea raiders. You need to put an end to their lawless ambitions. Choose your allies wisely, 
and confront your enemies without fear. So the Ithaca place uh, with the safe havens and coastal mastery, which uh, I have already explained. Um, there is also one thing that I would like to mention uh, at the beginning of this video. Uh, there is currently um, some uh, optimization issues in the game when it comes to diplomacy. Uh, I am not going to do this because uh, that's something that I actually would be both boring and uh, it would also not make for a, a fun experience for me because I want to experience the game. I'm sure we can reach an agreement. But uh, you can do uh, barter agreements where you basically just trade off everything you have uh, of resources and you can either just break those barter agreements uh, which like I could offer him 1800 or 1600 is the max I could offer I could offer him this and then I could uh, demand say uh, 1550 food no I couldn't demand that back but I could demand maybe 50 bronze he doesn't really want food so that's the thing here um, but he doesn't value gold that much i think yeah he values gold quite a bit actually we could do this and then if i did this i could then just break the treaty and uh, there wouldn't be any uh, repercussions in your liability but even worse than that is the fact that you can, if you are considered bankrupt in one of these, you get uh, a substantial modifier to the agreement. Uh, you can see the trade value there, it says 2.6. So if I were going in a deficit on food uh, and I were to give away one food, uh, the trade value would not be 2.6, but it would be 50, 60, 70 or even 80 which then means that I could go ask them for provinces and they would give them to me. So you can, at the current uh, time of the game, uh, more or less conquer uh, a great deal of the map on turn one without actually doing anything else but diplomacy. Now, this is something that uh, I am very convinced that Creative Assembly will patch uh, fairly quickly. Um, and uh, you may find my dubious as of uh, those of you who uh, are familiar with the uh, Total War series uh, probably already have gathered the Total War Saga games are Creative Assembly's uh, playground where they try out new mechanics where this is the new mechanic in this game five different resources instead of just gold uh, and the barter agreements also is slightly different than in previous titles so if you want to try that out um, by all means go ahead if you uh, want to uh, have a little bit of fun with uh, exploiting uh, the system while it is possible they're probably going to ruin it within a week or two so yeah uh, that aside, uh, let's just start here. We start out with one uh, spy, so let's go try and uh, poison the well for this army, which is the first army we need to go uh, deal with. Be their we failed on that. Uh, I need to adjust the camera settings because otherwise this is going to take ages every time something moves. Uh, fastest, fastest, high, high. The same on enemy factions. And the same on neutral factions. Here we go. And save the game quickly. Odysseus of Ithaca. Indeed. Now, we can't very, really recruit very much at the beginning, of course. But uh, we'll get around to that. Let's Ever go attack this faithful. army. The Telebones. And we'll fight the battle manually, of course. Dry weather, that's excellent. This is a rather small army, so I will take our ambushers and see here. Let's put them here. 
and let's turn off fire at will just in case um, we don't want them to start attacking right away so i think these guys have stalk so i could actually put them there and they would still be hidden as shown by the eye but if we put them in here it's uh, they are they also have the bonus of being hidden within the forest uh, now for the rest of the army we have some heavy sword skirmishers and two regular sword skirmishers and some islanders now these are the only one who doesn't have um have a uh, missile attack ish uh, if these guys had had vanguard uh, vanguard deployment i would have put them up with them but uh, for now let's just put them in there i'll take these swords and put them here and we'll take the other ones on each side like this and we'll put uh, odysseus there and start the battle and just move them forwards because the other army is going to be in there Okay, now let's move these forwards. I think we'll put them there. Send them over there so we can flank. I should have mocked these. make them move in the same if you lock them they move at the same pace which is one good reason to uh, to lock a group you can just press G again to um, unlock them when you are ready for combat okay so they are coming there see now they, they should be moving at the same pace Okay, so we have discovered some slingers in there. Now we'll see. Absolutely. And there is Thestius. Let's uh, flank them from up there. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. And start attacking. Okay, we want to move away from these. What's their speed? 56, 48, okay. Go. Now we can attack these. Victory is close enough to taste. Right, let's unboot them again. These guys will be the just has sighted your hidden units. skirmishing here, so that's good. Let's put on fire at will. There's a very silly thing with the AI that it does sometimes, where you can basically trap a unit in between two uh, missile units. It will run back and forth between them for some reason. It's a bit of cheese. These can be entertaining and quite tasty. This Aristeia is uh, getting up. Okay, we uh, shattered them. Let's go attack. Okay, we won. Decisive victory, and uh, yeah, 38 losses, that's pretty nice. The flanking is a very important part of army deployment in this game, it's also something that I've realized. I don't know. 
I think they will replenish this in one turn, but let's just take them on. Hard work wins renown. Indeed, uh, we have an objective to maintain 12 units. How big is the garrison down here? Eight. And what does that garrison consist of? Achaean slingers, young spears, a militia, and a regular fighter champion. Yeah, I own. Odysseus. Don't think we are a cheat Hades. That's an interesting thing. I don't think we have a big enough army to go take out that city currently. Especially not when they have that many uh, missile units. Probably could do it, but... Okay, so that's for self. Lead by example. 100 meter plus 10% to melee weapon and... Both melee attack and defense and also weapon damage. This gives charge and this gives morale. Okay, we'll take lead by example. That's a good skill. And we will recruit a couple more units, I think. Agreed. Two slingers and... These both have the same speed, which is interesting. Thank you, Athena. The uh, sword skirmishers are in all ways superior. There is no reason. I mean, unspottable. Okay, so that's the thing with the islanders. They are good for flanking because they are unspottable. But uh, now we'll take a unit of sword skirmishers then. Uh, Same and Ithaca. Yeah, here's the thing, you can get the um, uh, harbor up to level 5 with uh, Odysseus, which is nice, and uh, Favored by Athena. I need to go down there afterwards, yeah, uh, let's take a look at the research here. We are not making any stone. At all. That's not good. But this is a stone settlement, so that'll help. We get the bowman from the bowyer chain, or building, rather. Um, can get skirmish chariots. Those. Those will be tasty. We have the Warriors of Ithaca, weight class medium. See, most of these are weight class medium. Here is one unit that is weight class heavy, heavy sword Prepare skirmishers. You see the speed there is 35 versus 55 for a light one. And these are also runners, experts in flanking, experts in hiding. We have the light spearmen. Those are not really that interesting. But I'm not sure about this research here. Um, well, bronze. This is very good for uh, for Odysseus because uh, we need to use agents. Getting more ammunition on our missile units would also be good. I think we'll go with the Royal Stone first. Divine Will. I don't think we want to do a Hecatomb just yet. And here's the safe haven uh, mechanism. Uh, I don't think we want to establish any kind of... Uh, we safe havens here because we want to conquer these settlements anyways but maybe on uh, the mainland so 
I believe that is it actually. Yep. A shrewd plan. As you contemplate the military campaign that lies before you, your thoughts turn to Troy and its legendary walls, said to have been erected by Poseidon and Apollo themselves. Should you ever find yourself besieging the Trojan capital, you will require more than brute strength to break, breach its gates. You begin to conceive of a stratagem that might ensure victory with minimal loss of life should your armies ever find themselves before the city's battlements. I think it was Odysseus who came up with the idea of the horse. This quick-witted agent may build a safe haven in even the most hostile of lands. Send them forth to infiltrate the cities of your rivals. Thank you very much for that. Not yet. Uh, what we will do I is try to uh, do murmurs of sedition, though. People deserve the truth. Of course, we fail. Well, what else to expect? Truth. Uh, and I think we'll attack with Go this. Um, three turns. No. With that army on the way, I think we'll just attack. I'll try whether that's perfect. No, oh, this is... This isn't even a settlement. Interesting. Do we want to be attacking from here? I don't think so. Let's just take these four. Islanders can be over there. Our exemplary... I doubt they'll put anything there. The Achaean Slingers will put behind our main forces. And the Islanders, let's put them there. Move these guys over there. Turn on fire at will. And I forgot to group them again. That's fine. The foe has sighted your hidden units. Slay them! Let's charge. Do this correctly. We can do this on that. Close enough to taste. And snipe. Okay, so those are now running away. Okay, okay, there we go. Army loss victory. Because they got the army loss penalty. No need to run them down. 73 losses, that is more than acceptable. loot there and we'll just occupy this because we don't want regional unsta instability 
I think we can get a couple Consider more of these done. and one more of that. And there is no reason not to build this. Boathouse, it sounds very crude. <laughs> the growth in the province is at 105, but that's good. Oh! You can build envoys from... Oh, wait, this is a different building. Interesting. It's actually combining the... Uh... But it doesn't give influence. But then you have this one that gives a ton of influence compared to the... I think the other one was... Seven on the max level. Well, that's useful. I'm not complaining about that. Okay. Um, does anyone want to give us some uh, some wood? The Aetolians have plenty of wood, but they are not Don't very friendly. Don't try and we'll come out of this fine. They value gold and bronze. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But they do want a non-aggression pact, but I don't know where they are, so I don't know if they are going to be one of the factions that I want to attack or not, so... Let's just postpone this, uh, the, diploma the diplomatic uh, negotiations until we uh, know a little bit more about what we want to do. We do have a building that we can build here, but the uh, minus to influence is not ideal. And again, with this... Well, we'd have to build the other building, but with this building that we can build in the main settlement, we are going to get quite a bit of influence. Maybe getting this additional growth and food would be nice. Yeah, I think we'll build that. We've done that one. Construct any building. Upgrade any settlement building. Yeah, I... Thirst for conquest. Maintain control of one province. Favored by Athena. Uh, let's send this guy down this way. Uh, an uneventful voyage. Glory I beckons. think that this army should be enough to take out this city. He only had two units. Uh, that was the hero and one unit in that army. So let's send this guy down Odysseus here. This guy. Let's send Odysseus down here. And other than that, we can upgrade this, which should be fine. Fury, that's a... Okay, so this is a very good province. The only thing we lack is wood. Uh... Yep. That should be it for this turn. One is done. The helping hand of fate. Oh, right. We have to go all the way around. Um, They'll believe their success. Incompetent. Very good. And he gained the smuggler trait. Ten percent movement range. Odysseus of Ithaca. Now, what I probably want to avoid here is going inland that while works. in forced march. Get this ship underway. Okay. In Athena's no, name. that's not going to be good enough. They might attack us from the city now, but <laughs> I don't think they will. That's beyond me. This one. They are mustering. Uh, but we did damage their uh, garrison. So they should be at half health, so that's good. Uh, anything we want to build... 
Yeah, let's upgrade the uh, cranioi. Cranioi. I don't know. Cephalinia. Okay, so now he's got five units there. I still think that we have enough. Let's uh, try to poison the well. Ah, the game actually let us do both. Wow. Um, you want to become diligent. Now we attempt the city. So they are damaged. Good. And he, he only recruited militia. Interesting. Is this a city map? Yes, it is. Good. Now, a perfect try where there is one. Uh, as some of you probably are acutely aware of, there are ample ways to cheese the AI in uh, in Total War, and uh, there is. Uh, one of the ways you can cheese the AI is that it seems to be programmed to stay inside of the city boundaries uh, if uh, at all costs to protect the city center square. I have seen a couple of instances where the, the AI actually has taken its, unit, its units out of the city, but for the most part they usually just leave their, uh, their units inside, much to my great amusement, because what I usually do then is just move up with ranged units and shoot the uh, opposing army imagine that and while they just stand there uh, letting me shoot them uh, the question is he's probably going to have units yeah, let's put these in this is grass by the way tall grass so you see the, they are hiding in here so the AI won't be uh, knowing that they're there. Uh, as for our other units, let's put the Islanders over here. See if we can attract the AI to put some units there. We can also put one of these sword units here. And then we'll take that one and take these four and put them here. Maybe move them a little bit because of the cliff there. And... That seems like a good formation to me. Let's move them up here. Okay, so there is a unit over there. But most of his military is over here, actually. Now, you'll notice that he's going to start moving units over there because he sees that we are moving in here. Imagine that. Move these a little bit. At your command. These four we want to... Uh, the foe has shited your hidden units. Okay, so he's seen this one. No mercy. Go at them. You can see what he's doing. He's just standing there while we are throwing javelins in their faces. Ah, he actually moved. That is not common. Oh, no, he's going to go over there. Under attack. attack those. No, those. Oh, he has skirmishers. I don't think so. Shattered that one. Good. Now we can start attacking from this angle. Snipe, attack. Javelins uh, usually have armor piercing, while slings and bows do not, uh, usually. 
There are some exceptions to that rule. Let's put these guys... Not that way, but this way. Yeah. Okay, so these guys are shattered. Good. Let's attack these. Uh, move them up here. How is the melee attack and defense? Not perfect. We can attack these from behind. Victory is close enough to taste. That should shatter them quickly enough. There we go. We can move these guys over here. And this one, we can attack. Stop. Go like that. Um, these need to attack these skirmishers. Should probably do this. An attack there. This unit might return. We should keep an eye out for that. Yep, there it goes. Uh, let's shoot it. One of your units has no more ammunition. That's fine. You guys move in there. And they got the army loss penalty, and we won. Now, we did take quite a bit more uh, losses in this battle, but that's fine. Still a decisive victory, um, but since it was capturing a settlement, uh, it is an acceptable amount of losses. Decisive victory... Mine 48 food. I would have wanted some wood, but I can live with that. Occupy. Hard work wins renown. We got the wood for the mission uh, reward, so that's good. And now we can uh, also issue a royal commandment. Gained an ancillary, the Hesperides. Hesperides's apples. All may benefit from Gaia's nourishing bounty. 15% more food in the region and minus one to construction time in province capitals. That is a very, very nice ancillary. And we destroyed the Telebones. A well placed blade can avert a war. He leveled up. Um, I'm not convinced by either of these. Although the collector could be good, but. Um, I very rarely kill battle captives, so we wouldn't get plus 40 influence after victory. Raiding no longer affect incurs movement penalties. That on the other hand is actually quite good. And so is that. Okay, maybe I am convinced by this after all then. We will of course take Formation Specialist before that, but... Um, yeah, let's grab that then. Since he will need to be standing here for at least one turn, we can grab a few more Slingers. It shall be so. And... I think it, one, of the, one more unit of Islanders, uh, just to have... Um, them as flanking units would be interesting. I would merge these, but uh, these guys have chevrons and these do not. But, uh, usually when you merge them, you end up losing the chevrons, so... Quite pleasant music here as well. Yes, there's an apprentice armorer here. But I want to wait. Plus one to recruit rank of new shielded infantry. No, I want to tear this down. And we want to upgrade the settlement. I doubt we have room for more uh, spies, but we do have room for an envoy. 
But one thing that I'm thinking is that it might be a good idea. That was definitely the wrong button. Uh, it might be a good idea to get some... That's priestesses. The one that gave... Prayer to Apollo. That's something that I've completely forgot. Plus 5% success chance of all alien action. That actually, that's something that I should be using more. I was certain that one of these... Okay, so that doesn't help then. It's only the Templars that helps, but... Considering most of our units have ranged attacks, it wouldn't make sense to, uh, to build any other Temple chain in here rather than Apollos, so... Let's wait with the recruiting more agents until we have the, uh, the at least the um, altar, if not the temple of Apollo. Uh, Ithaca. That is for priestesses, but plus two to recruit rank of agents. And this is plus four, and this one is plus six. And it also gives us a rather substantial... Um, cost reduction to recruiting them so yeah we will definitely wait until we have uh i think until we have the sanctuary to be honest i don't think there is anything else we want to do so these provinces up here are the curators or Curi curators while in here is elise how do these people regard us? The curators don't like us because of broken treaties. I don't know when that happened. But it must have happened before we started the game, so that's something that is already in there because we have a steadfast reliability. Uh, Ellis... Yeah. They don't care much for us, but they're not outright hostile either. What are your relations? You have a non-aggression pact with the Arcadians, Pylos and Ionia. Whereas the Curators have war with the Aetolians and non-aggression pact with Casopeia. Casopai? Casopai. I don't know where that faction is. Okay, so down here we have a non-aggression pact with them. Ah, they're the non pillar pillar. Since then. Dorians? Pia Piacians? Uh, we seem to have an impression pack with them too for some weird reason. And they are somewhere in here. The Ionians. They should be around here somewhere. Okay. Now, the Trojan factions don't like us very much for obvious reasons, and I don't expect them to like us more as the game progresses. But uh, let's end the turn. And we get 400 wood and 300 stone from that. And I think it is time to end the episode here. So uh, I hope that uh, you're looking forward to seeing the adventures of Odysseus together with me. And for now, thank you so much for joining me. I will be seeing, seeing you all in the next episode.